Okay, so um, uh, you know the, the diff you know meditation and is that related to uh, lucid dreaming or out of body experiences, or does the body go to um, just a you know my, my own views of, of meditation generally I, I think meditation was is a practice whereby some kind of mechanism is used and it's time bounded. Um, so, you know, you might do meditation in the morning or in the evening or, or during the day. So it's a time-bounded activity. So the ego stops uh, at a certain point during the day to do meditation to, um, to if you like, gain, gain a different uh, level of consciousness. So normally, uh, normally with most people, I mean, this also relates to what is the ego. And for me, the ego is... Um, it's just the collection of programs or belief systems that are imprinted uh, within within a, an individual, and uh, for me, the, the, it's correlated to two different factors: the level of repressed feelings and uh, the le level of beliefs. So, the different uh, different levels of consciousness. See, when you get when you are, you know, when I um, are the different levels of consciousness. When there's a lot of repressed feelings. That it's like you're tuning into a wave band, like a frequency within the collective, uh, and you tend to pick up those kinds of thoughts depending on where you're at. So I used to be an active addiction. So I used to be a food addict. I used to be a workaholic in the stock market. So in that kind of wave band where I was in active addiction, you know, the level of repressed feelings, which co which constituted my ego, tuning into that, if you like, vibrational frequency was that I would get all these kinds of thoughts of not enough and I need to get more all the time. So it's like this feeling of lack and I'd get, I'd, I'd say I'd pick up these thoughts from the collective because all people in addiction have similar types of thoughts. I need more food, I need more success, I need more money, I need more prestige and just to fill up an inner emptiness, you know, a spiritual void within. So it was, it was, going, it was going through going through all of, all of, um, all of that. So, um, now, so that's my state of consciousness. Now, some people are at different levels of consciousness, depending on how much, how much are repressed feelings, what kind of thoughts. Like, people who are relatively serene and peaceful don't have that many thoughts. They can be quite present, and, and they don't use mechanisms to escape their feelings so often. So like normal people, if they have a bad day, don't necessarily have to eat 10 donuts. Or if they, you know, if they get, if they get sacked from work, they're not going to be in the pub for three days non-stop, you know, to try and quench the feelings. So they won't have so much repressed feelings, so they'll act relatively normal. So meditation, meditation, you know, you have various mechanisms. Like when I started my spiritual journey uh, some 18 years ago, the first thing I did was do TM meditation. So TM meditation, you just have a mantra and just repeat that mantra for 20 minutes and you tend to, it tends to like, uh, your thoughts start to slow down and you start to feel a bit more peaceful and serene. Or you can have meditations where you just look at a candle or you're just allowing yourself to be focused on the breathing so there's all these various techniques, and then the, the ego mind start the thoughts become less, you start to get a sense of peace. There are there are certain places, and you know, Dr. Hawkins talked about the Monroe Institute, which he tried, which are places where um, they give you alternating frequencies within the ears to try and get you tuned into a certain vibration, so that you could you could have out of body experiences. Uh, so that's uh, that. Wouldn't, I wouldn't really cl classify that as usual meditation because it would be altering the uh, the state of consciousness to to leave the body, you know, and to go and visit the astral planes. So you might go and visit like a nice heavenly domain or various other domains. Um, and there's many there's many astral domains, both on the positive side and on, on the negative side. So you have domains which are more hellish and, and domains which are so that's. That I wouldn't sort of classify as um, meditation as such. I mean, the out of body, I've never had um, an out of body experience, but, um, but they tend to be quite common. You know, like if you go into, 
Um, like people who go in to have operations and they have the general anaesthetic, they'll often flip out of their body and suddenly uh, witness uh, the operation, uh, you know, going through, you know, that's, being ha that's happening. And be then they go back into the body and tell the surgeon exactly what they said. You know, uh, you, you know, you, you dropped, you dropped, you dropped something in me, and you forgot to take it out, or whatever it is. So they can, they can sort of, they can sort of see that. So it does, you know, shows the outer body. The thing with out of body experiences and near death spiritual experiences is that out of body spiritual experiences don't, don't give a rise in consciousness. So if you just leave your body, uh, people who are going through a very difficult incident, like uh, rape or something like that they'll often go out of body and just watch the thing from the ceiling and then go back in. But the level of consciousness doesn't change, whereas uh, a near-death spiritual experience, if you check it out with muscle testing, when you go into the light and, ha and experience the light, those people actually have a mu uh, an elevated uh, uh, increase. They often have a loss of fear of death, their level of consciousness increases. You know, I won't name her, but I, I know a lady that runs A Course in Miracles group who had a near-death wide light spiritual experience. You know, and, and you know, she's, she's more or less like a saint, you know. She's do, and I haven't asked her, but I'm pretty sure she hasn't got the fear of death because you sort of, you sort of see, oh, when you die, you go into the light, so you're not going to be afraid of going into the light, you see, whereas people are going to be afraid of, they don't know what's going to happen. So, um, put that off.